Okay, so today we're doing conservation momentum and collisions. And first off, let's talk about what a perfect collision is. So a perfect collision is one where we just ignore any losses. We ignore that there's friction. We ignore <clears throat> that there's a change in any type of energy. Um, so energy and momentum, that's NRG, by the way. Energy and momentum is conserved. So they're the same. Before and after the collision, they're the same, okay? So in that sense, um, we're gonna talk about, yeah. So in that sense, like any sound or light or anything that's produced, we don't really take that into account mathematically when we talk about um, conservation of momentum because we're, we're conserving momentum and energy. So for conservation momentum, the total momentum remains constant, which means the momentum you have before the collision and the momentum you have after the collision <coughs> are exactly the same. So this is before and this is after. Um, so then we have um, a, a couple of equations that you're going to need to memorize probably. There's one that's on your formula sheet, but the rest are not. Okay, so what types of collisions do we have? Let's talk about collisions and let's talk about some math associated with them. Okay, so if we have elastic, elastic collisions mean that objects collide and bounce. There is an equation on your formula sheet, and that's the equation where m is mass in kilograms and v is velocity in meters per second. So we're saying the sum of the momentum before is equal to the sum of the momentum after. It's still, um, it's still this concept, but now we're putting it to objects, okay? So I have a little example, and I know I'm going fast, so you may have to slow this down or pause every now and then, but so here's, oh, I forgot to write after. So here's my example. So you have a two kilogram mass traveling at three meters per second to the right, and a one kilogram mass traveling at two meters per second to the right, and then they collide, and then afterwards your two kilogram one is going one meter per second still to the right, and we wanna know how fast is the one kilogram one going now, okay? So, there we go. All right, so basically you're, you're just plugging in this formula, right? So the, I'm going to call this my m1, and this is so this will be my v1. So then two times positive three because it's going to the right. That's a positive direction. Plus one times positive two. So this is my m2, my v2, um, and that equals two times positive one plus one times your V2 spike, I guess, the final velocity of your second thing. All right, so then two times three is six, plus two is eight, and we're gonna subtract two from that, that's six. Six divided by one means that our velocity is six meters per second. So that's the final velocity, your V2 spike, okay? Um, kind of simple math, right? <clears throat> All right, so if you have an inelastic collision, that's when objects collide and they stick together, okay? So that has a slightly different um, equation. Okay, so you'd have M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals the sum of the masses times the final velocity. Okay, so here I have another example. So I have a three kilogram mass traveling at two meters per second, bumps into, from the rear, a two kilogram mass that's going one meter per second. Both of them are going in the positive direction. They collide and then they stick together. So the three and the two stick together and I wanna know what's their final velocity, okay? So um, this is my M1 and my V1. This is my M2 and my V2. The sum of these masses is my M1 plus M2, okay? And then V3 is what I'm looking for. So I do three times positive two plus two times positive one equals three plus two is five times V3. Okay, so three times two is six, plus two is eight, divided by five, so if you stick that in your calculator, then your V3 is simply equal to 1.6 meters per second.
Okay, and it's positive because you're still going in the positive direction. Okay, so one more example and then I'm done with you for today. Okay, so then we have, oops, here we are. Okay, recoil. So in a recoil, you have a single stationary object, so it's sitting still. It either blows up or something causes it to split into fragments that travel in opposite directions, okay? So that means the momentum before is zero and the momentum after is also zero, okay? So examples of that would be like a cannon and a cannonball, two people on ice, a bullet and a gun, um, things that explode basically, or things that push each other away, okay? Okay, so there's an equation for that, and you can think of it two ways. This is kind of the way that most people go with. Zero is simply equal to the momentum in object one plus the momentum in the other object, okay? You can think of it as the momentum in one object is equal to negative the momentum in the other object. It's the same thing. So either one will work. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then I have your last example. Okay. So you have a four kilogram object before it explodes and splits into a three kilogram and a one kilogram object. The one kilogram object goes off at five meters per second to the right. The three kilogram one goes off the other direction and we want to know what is its velocity. Okay, so simply, I'm just gonna plug in this formula. So zero equals, this is my M1, okay, three, and this is my V1, which is what I'm looking for, plus one times, and that's positive five, okay? So I have three V1 equals, or plus five, so that means that three V1 equals negative five, right? So then you just divide. And so then your V1, if you stick it in your calculator, just equals negative 1.7 meters per second. Okay, and that's it. So you have homework. Your homework is a little challenging. There are all three types of collisions in your homework. Um, but some of them are combinations of these types. So you have to read carefully, draw pictures if you need to, and set them up appropriately. Okay, good luck. Next week we're doing um, two-dimensional collisions, so get ready. Bye-bye.